Good evening, everyone. I'll call this city council meeting to order. May I have the roll call, please? Councilmember Elliott? Here. Councilmember Garcia? Here. Councilmember Sandal? Here. Councilmember Fitzhenry? Here. Mayor Gotell? Here. We have no one for the open forum. Okay, would everybody please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. At this time, I'll ask the council approval of the minutes of the special city council work session of October 8th, 2013, and the regular city council meeting of October 8th, 2013. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Passes. Um, we have lots of great presentations tonight, so I'm uh, real excited about this, especially this first one, is a presentation of the Bronze Level Bike Friendly Community Award from the League of American Bicyclists. Um, this is quite a prestigious award, so this is really exciting. So I'm sure staff has a great report for us. Yeah, good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the council. Um, I'm Jeff Pearson. I'm the transportation engineer for the city. Um, I'm just going to pass it along. I'll introduce uh, Nick Mason, who represents the Bike Alliance of Minnesota. He was um, assisted us in the application for this award, um, along with funding from uh, a couple representatives from SHIP, which is State Health Improvement mm -hmm. Program on Bloomington Health. Uh, so they they all helped uh, for us to uh, apply for this award, and and I'll bring up Nick, and he can kind of explain what is the award, what is the League of uh, of uh, Bicyclists, and uh, and give you a little background. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor and Council Members, for having us here tonight. It's an honor to be here to get to pre present this award to you. Uh, I've been very fortunate that I've got to be a part of uh, every uh, awarder application for bike friendly communities in Minnesota, but um, it's, this is a, an exciting one for me because I haven't always been working with that community for 10 years and I, I've been really lucky that um, when I moved to Minnesota I came and worked for Penn Cycle and so some of you oh, may have you. remember hearing uh, about Two Wheels to Town uh, started by Jim Sorensen, a, collabor yeah. a very innovative collaboration um, that really, I think, got things going a long time ago. And I want to emphasize that this is a, a prestigious award, and I'll get into that in a second, but you are, you're not one of 10 bike-friendly communities in Minnesota. You are the only bicycle-friendly suburb. I can't overemphasize mm -hmm. what a huge deal that is, because when I go do this work all over the state and I talk to folks around the country, you know, people talk about Portland, Oregon, and Boulder, Colorado, and Davis, and, you know, Minneapolis is now getting up there as well. Um, but they're, they're urban cities, and so people often think, well, this, this can't really work here in my town. And we've been lucky that we've worked with a lot of greater Minnesota uh, communities, and three new ones this time, Duluth, Grand Marais, and Winona also came online, so they're doing it. But the suburb is something new, and some people have said we can never have a bike-friendly suburb. They're just not designed for bikes. And you guys are proving to be a leader in Minnesota, and a leader in the state, and I want to thank you for that because um, it's really important. So a little bit about the program. Um, this is a national award. It's uh, presented by the League of American Bicyclists, mm -hmm. an organization founded in 1880 and now represents uh, the 57 million bicyclists in America. And the program is revolutionizing the way communities uh, benchmark their efforts to become more bike friendly. Uh, there's uh, all of our team that worked on this will, will back me up in saying that this is no small feat. This is over 80 questions uh, across five disciplines, including evaluation, engineering, education, encouragement, and enforcement. Um, so it's not something you can send a picture and a check and get a pretty sign uh, and call it good. It's a major effort. And like I said, there are 10 communities in Minnesota, so a very small number still even today. And less than half of those communities who apply and I won't name any nearby suburbs names, uh, they don't get an award the first time, they have to go back and do more homework. Um, so I just wanna, again, say hats off. It's a big deal to go out and get this award, but to do it the first time uh, is a really big deal. Why do communities do this? Um, it's a really good question, why is it important? 
Uh, the really short answer in today's tight economy is that in the long run, it's more expensive not to invest in active transportation than it is to, to not it, than it is to do so. The benefits are numerous: lower health care costs, healthier people, of course, greater and rising land and home values, communities who attract a vibrant workforce to keep the economy strong, and residents who are happy when they go outside and want to become more active and meet their at least minimum physical activity requirements. So what were your keys to success? Well, there are too many to actually put on the list today, but I wanted to highlight the really uh, important ones. Um, number one, and this is probably the most important one because it says a lot about how you've been able to do things and your potential. And that's effective collaboration. As Jeff said, we wouldn't be here today without Bloomington Public Health and the Statewide Health Improvement Program. Uh, they helped start off an evaluation uh, process last year. Um, we went through some questions. We provided recommendations. Of course, things were going really well. Um, but just in the last year, recommendations we provided as part of that report have been implemented and made improvements. Um, you've got incredibly dedicated staff. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Tom Foley's name, Jeff Pearson's predecessor, who, who did a lot in his time here. Um, and Jeff has been our contact and coordinated with other staff across all disciplines through the city. You've got enthusiastic elected officials across the city, and I met with a lot of them on different boards over the last six months who are really excited to be working on this stuff. Uh, and of course, passionate advocates throughout the community. It's that three-tiered approach that really makes a difference. You've got a best practice bicycle master plan that I show in every other community that I go to. Um, this is just a slice of it, but this is just showing. These are the places where people live, and these are the pl places where people want to go. How do we get there? It was a foundation of the plan. It sounds really simple, but most places don't have anything like that. You've got people riding bikes, above average mode share. Of course, you need to actually have people on bikes and you have the metrics to prove it. You've got a very successful open streets event with thousands of people, although I do want to point out Grand Rapids, Minnesota, population 8,000, they had 2,000 people show up. So you percentage-wise, there's some room to grow there. <laughs> Just want to point that out. Um, you've got a great low volume grid street, ne street network that's easy to ride on. And, you know, people talk about the innovative features in Minneapolis, but just look at the photo. This is your new 76th Street. What a transformation from what it was. You've got separate concrete pavement marking for the fast bicyclists who are on the road, and you've got a separate two-way facility for families who are living in the neighborhood that w who don't want to be on the street. Very innovative. And you're thinking about safe routes to school. You've done multiple plans. And I think, again, very importantly, momentum, that effective collaboration and interest in active transportation is really big. So don't, don't stop now. You're only at the beginning. It's a Ford tier system, so you can get all the way up to platinum if you so desire, and I'd recommend it. Um, so don't rest on your laurels. There's some exciting things coming out of this next round of ship work, including improving bike parking across the city, teaching uh, bike ped education in our schools through oh. PE teachers to every one of our kids so they know how to cross the street safely when they're walking and use their signals and obey traffic uh, laws from the very get-go, um, and making a plan to reach all road users so they know that active transportation is a part of Richfield's identity. So on behalf uh, of the League of American Bicyclists and its program manager of the Bike Alliance, I'm happy to present you uh, with this award of a bronze bicycle uh, from our community. Thanks. Thank you. Wow. Madam Mayor, if you don't mind coming down, Chip is here to take a picture, so we'll okay. have a sign and a picture quick Do we put that on the entrance to the city or it looks I like an know. outdoor sign. It mm -hmm. does. Yeah, if you could mount it outside on the street. <coughs> I think we need duplicates of that more than well, one. Every entrance. Every one entrance. Ent <laughs> yes, yes, I I'd say so. I think there's 16 of them when I counted here. <laughs> and it gives uh, the council and the also the council the handoff every time we have a new development it's like where are the bike racks mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you a, a lot of you always try that's what's yeah
And I will say, Mayor, I remember sitting on this council when we had one, one block of bike trail. That's it. That was all. But it was one block at a time. And so. yeah, we keep hearing from the young folks. Well, thank you for coming. Thanks for all you did. I just want to say to Council Member Sandal that her pushiness really helped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my pushiness? Thank you, Edwina. <laughs> and thanks to the ship folks who were here who made this possible too. Thank you for being here. Tim Top and Topper too. Thank you for all you do. I, I'm just pedaling all of the council in the right direction. That's, That's right. The plan. You do, oh, do you never forget about it. Thank you for reminding us. Um, next on the agenda is the annual meeting with the Friendship City Commission. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council and friends. Um, I'm Roger Swanson, chair of the Richfield uh, Friendship City Commission, and our annual report is a, a pleasant one. It's, it's very positive this year. Um, we've had a relationship with uh, Heredia Costa Rica for the 23 years and three days. Mm. Actually, the October 19th was our anniversary date, 23 years ago. Um, and we are pleased this year that we have uh, two new members, adult members, and we've had a, a student member this last year. And uh, hopefully we'll renew his uh, application that was turned in not too lawfully long ago uh, because he's made a difference and uh, helps to have students on the, uh, on the commission, uh, especially like ours who know the language and mm -hmm. have been in uh, southern countries to give us a little insight. Richfield's ambassador to, her, to Heredia, uh, Cynthia Mandel, has been living for almost two years in, in the area down there with her husband, and they'll be back in January. We have missed them. Uh, I'll mention a little bit more about that little bit here. Um, this year we have been involved in uh, two events, the Unity in the Community and Ken Fest. In each of these we've uh, given out free uh, Costa Rican coffee. And in the pen fest, we, uh, we uh, were giving out uh, c uh, coloring pages for the kids to color a, a, an ox cart. So we thought that that would be something that would be uh, a little different and some activity for them to do. Uh, to emphasize a little bit of the culture and colors and whatever kids would like to do. Um, We've uh, gotten some direction about uh, a possible new sculpture. Uh, we talked with, uh, with Cynthia being in, in the Heredia area, we've talked with the sculptor, uh, Guillermo Hernandez, who sculpted Alan Alanzia, who's in the sculpture park, of, an, of another sculpture that may be a, a youth that's in sports, and uh, mm. it's, it's at early stages. So uh, we'll, we'll see where, where that comes in the future here. One of our joys has been that the Richfield Dual Language School has uh, uh, first students who completed through the fifth grade uh, this last June uh, wanted to do something that was uh, a little promotion for their graduation. And they, uh, a couple of parents and uh, six parents and seven kids uh, decided to go to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And we were involved in helping, uh, ad advising them and uh, making contacts, and Cynthia was right down there, making contacts to see things and the people that we knew and or have visited uh, Richfield. And that was a joy to hear their outcome. We've been working with the parks. Uh, hopefully we'll get some new signs put up for Heredia Park. Mm -hmm. There are no signs out of, of Heredia Park and maybe the old one is still around mm -hmm. on either end of the park. Um, we'd like to see that signage back up and not have people think in Richfield that this is just an encroachment of the municipal building and absorbing land. Mm -hmm. This is a park and we'd like our, we're in more in, in tune to the name Heredia mm -hmm. uh, because of our commission to have the park name back on, on the park. Mm. Well in Heredia, um, they have also got a park that they are putting together and they're going to name it Richfield Park. 
uh, when I had went on their last trip uh, with the group in, in 2011, uh, this park was about a block from the family that I stayed with. And they've been uh, developing some things, playground equipment and, and uh, open areas that they can work with the neighboring uh, community. They seem to be little enclaves themselves, but they uh, want to work together with some others there. Um, let's see. Got a list here. Got a nice long list here, but not really. One other thing that uh, happened uh, in 1994, the uh, Radio soccer team sent uh, kids up here for the Schwann's Cup soccer tournament in Blaine, and they're, next year they're having their 20th anniversary or reunion. Uh, they're on early stages of that. They had talked about coming up here to visit for part of the reunion or have a reunion down there mm. and maybe someone come down to visit them. So otherwise we were planning uh, once Cynthia comes back that we would probably have another uh, trip in 2015 for sending someone down there. It takes about a year of preparation for, for something of that nature. Uh, if and when something comes about, we'll get the word out and find out who's interested in attending and uh, go from there. I think that's all I have for a report. It's positive. We've been working on a number of things. But one other thing is the little ox cart down the hallway here outside the Heredia room. Um, we're concerned that the sunlight on that cart is drying out the cart. There's too much sun on from two directions that uh, we need to either move the cart, would be a suggestion, or put black paper around it or do something because it's getting too much sun. It's, it's uh, taking all the varnish out of the wood. Oh. When it was in the old uh, uh, city hall building, it was in the back of the room, which doesn't fit here, of course. Nobody saw it in there. But it's a nice location, <laughs> okay. and it's very nice location, but it's getting too much sun. So okay. it's a concern that we need to do something. Okay. What that is, we'll have to look. Okay. Other than that, that's my report. If there's any questions or. That's wonderful. Thank you for all the great connections you've been making. Um, Thank you. Exploring the, commu the community. Um, next, we have an annual meeting with the Civil Service Commission. Your Honor, if I could, we, we should remind people we still have openings on the Friendship, on the friendship Commission. So if anyone has <coughs> an interest in applying and working with this group, please submit your names and the City Council will be happy to meet with you and get you working. That's right. Great. Good evening, Council Members, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Phil Mortensen. I'm the President of the Richfield Civil Service Commission. Basically, I'm going to start out with, I've been, I was initially appointed to the commission in January of 1994. I've served all but one of the 20 years since then. Uh, so I'm informing you right now, I'm not going to be reapplying for a re reappointment to the commission at the end of my term in January. Okay. So you, you know ahead of time that you'd be looking for somebody to replace me. Uh, Every three years, I come and come and address you. This is my seventh time. <laughs> all of you are, uh, weren't here all during that time. In fact, all of you, none of you were here when I first started. So I'm going to start out now with the accomplishments of 2012. First of all, let the people that don't know, we're probably the least known commission in the city. We're a commission of three members. We meet as needed, except for the statutory meeting on the first Monday in every February. So with the, uh, the accomplishments, first of all, last year, we, of course, went through the formality of electing a vice president and secretary. This president is designated under Minnesota state statutes. First of all, we certified the entry-level police officer eligible register then we approved the uh, assistant fire chief testing procedures. After that, we certify the assistant fire chief eligible register, followed by approving the police sergeant promotion testing procedures, followed by certifying that uh, police sergeant el promotion eligibility list. Then we went to the uh, 
approve the police cadet to police officer internal promotion process. Uh, one that's not on my list, we also approved the list. Within uh, the last of uh, the events for 2012, we approved the deputy public safety director, deputy police chief hiring process, followed by certifying the, dep the deputy director of public safety and the deputy police chief eligible register. So we did have quite a bit that did go on in 2012, and of course next year the uh, president will let you know what happened in 2013. If the mayor and council have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Council, any, any questions? No, we appreciate your time and coming to give us the, the I'll, update. I'll end by saying that was, I was glad to serve the city of Richfield for 19 years. Thank you for your time and service too. We appreciate you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next we have the annual meeting of the Charter Commission. Madam Mayor and members of the Richfield City Council, the Richfield Charter Commission <coughs> is made up of 15 members who are appointed by the Hennepin County Chief Judge. The annual meeting of the Richfield Charter Commission was held on January 29th, 19, or 2013. At that meeting, we had the election of officers, which we need to have at the beginning of each year. And then uh, we had uh, our city attorney, uh, Heine, was present with us, and she brought forward uh, five changes, uh, amendments to the uh, charter that uh, she thought would be of interest to us. And after we discussed those, uh, we moved by unanimous vote that uh, she should go and uh, put those in order for uh, charter amendments. Our second meeting was held on March 18th, 2013, and at that point, uh, Attorney Heine brought forth her recommendations on the five uh, charter amendments that uh, we were to look at. By a majority vote, the commission uh, approved the following amendments to the charter, com to the charter section 4.1, section point zero one to 5.20, Section 6.05, Section 7.01, Section 8.04. These amendments then were sent to you as the Richfield City Council on April 18th, 2013. And I would like to, on behalf of the Charter Commission, uh, thank you very much for your unanimous support in moving those uh, five amendments to the Richfield Sunday Council, uh, which you did on May 28th, 2013. That's my report. Mm -hmm. I wanna thank you for all the work that you did. I know that Kareen worked really hard to get all those things through before she um, left the city. Uh, and uh, I know you had a lot to do really quickly, so thank you to all the members of the Charter Commission who worked on that, appreciate well, we it. Well, were, we were fortunate to have her uh, because of her long time yeah. familiarity with Richfield could help walk through those. I think some of those amendments uh, have been trying to get through the Charter Commission for a for number a of years. So to be able to say that uh, we finally have accomplished those. And so generally outside of that first meeting in January where we need to elect officers, uh, unless the legislature changes something dramatically that we need to deal <coughs> with, uh, we're a commission that doesn't have uh, too much to do, and especially now that we've gotten these five amendments taken care of. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight, Marty. <coughs> um, now it's time for council discussion. Hats off to hometown hits, and I know you're chafing at the bit there, Edwina Garcia. <laughs> so go ahead. And I only have seven tonight. Decide. Only seven. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, my able assistant will help me out. Here we go. 
Okay, I've been talking about this uh, Latino Community Forum that is sponsored by um, the um, Chicano Latino Affairs Council, which is a state agency, and they're charged with, um, you know, seeking comment from the Latino community and taking it back to the governor and the legislature. And so this uh, particular forum invites uh, all the elected officials and, and school personnel, and there's, um, uh, it will be held at Assumption Catholic Church on November the 4th from 6 to 8 p.m. So we would like to certainly invite all the community, not necessarily just the Latino community. It's a very informative forum. And uh, the mayor is scheduled to be there. And uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, she's the only one invited besides me. But <laughs> so please join us. Okay, the other thing is, see I, did, I do have that many. Yeah. The other thing is that I mentioned before the Affordable Health Care Act panel discussions. Well, they did finally secure um, a place to have it. It'll be at Fairview South Dell Hospital in the International Room, and that will be October the 23rd from 11.30 to 1 o'clock p.m., and that this is especially beneficial to um, businesses that, you know, are going to be involved in securing um, health care insurance for their personnel. Um, the other thing is remind people about the Community Center Fall Bo Boutique, which will be held this coming Saturday from 8.30 to 3 o'clock p.m. And this is always a fun time. And, uh, you know, they've got uh, plenty, plenty of, um, of folks that have contributed to make this happen. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Navin, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, Navigating the Waters uh, 2013 will be held Thursday, October the 21st. And what that is, it's, um, it's a seminar that focuses on the services provided by Hennepin County. Uh, so it's, it's gonna, uh, we're gonna. Uh, October 31st, isn't that right? Yeah, what did I say? 21st. Oh, 31st. October 31st. Yeah, 31st, sorry about, thank you. Anyway, we'll, they'll, they'll be talking about um, the uh, updates on the South Suburban um, hubs, centers. You know, they are closing Century Plaza in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, they are, we'll be talking about energy assistance, um, emergency assistance, and then the new healthcare exchange. So that'll be Thursday, October the 31st, 8.30 to noon at the South Dell Library Large Meeting Room. And finally, although I do have one that if somebody doesn't mention it, I'll come back to it. Finally, I just wanted to say that uh, Sunday was Emily Day's birthday party at the Wood Lake, uh, at Wood Lake. And it was just a grand, grand time. She had students from when she taught school that were there and one of them brought her an apple <laughs> she had colleagues that she taught with. She had uh, folks that played tennis with her, and she played tennis into her 90s. She had people that had worked with her in the variety of, um, of um, you know, her volunteer <coughs> work. I mean, she's just an incredible woman. Um, if you know Emily, you know that she's got a beautiful heart. She's a great person. You never, I have never, and I've known her since the 80s, I've never heard her say anything negative about anybody or about, in, or about she's just a real cheerleader for our community. And I hope that we can do something too to recognize her because, uh, you know, quite frankly, I think if we had more people like Emily Day, I mean, we wouldn't have any problems at all. Well, and she was a hundred years old and 100 still going. A hundred years old, you Isn't that bet. Amazing? Yeah, and she's an uh, amazing lady. And she's still going. Yep. So you know, um, we're we're blessed that she was part of our community. 
and I think I'm done until I, <laughs> un unless you guys don't finish, then I've got a couple of others. Okay, <laughs> all right, Pat. <laughs> am, am I wrong in not having understood that uh, you have the Friends of Woodlake or some similar group has commissioned the pavilion to be built in Emily Day's Oh, yeah, thank honor. you for mentioning that, yes. See, see, see yes. I try to catch you on that. You're so smart. <laughs> I bet you're. Well, and, and once again, with with all the list of things you had to announce, I want to thank you for allowing me to to uh, announce the Richfield Human Rights Commission in conjunction with the Volunteer Lawyers Network, sponsoring a, a legal workshop and advice clinic on housing law for for tenants. And the one thing uh, it doesn't say it on here is my understanding, at least uh, at the last Human Rights Commission I met, that. There were some representative landlords that also were invited to attend just so we had a sharing of information from both sides of the equation. Um, it's scheduled for Wednesday, October 30th, uh, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. in the Bartholomew Room, which is just behind the council chambers here. This is the second housing law workshop and advice clinic the Human Rights Commission has put on, and it had a representative attendance at the first one. I think that this one is going to expand and bring in a lot more people that that are interested in their rights and responsibilities on both the tenant side and the landlord side. And I think exchanging the information, having access to free legal advice, being able to understand what, what the individual rights and obligations are serve to better the, the housing stock in all our community, and I think it's beneficial. And if you have any questions or just uh, a curiosity as to housing law, and what it envelops and entails. Uh, I'd suggest you come, ask your questions, and, and share any information you may have in regards to that topic also. So once again, Wednesday, October 30th, 2013, in the Bartholomew Room, starting at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Council Member Sandal. Um, the League of Women Voters is sponsoring a meeting uh, this Saturday, October 26th at 9.15, and the topic will be, for anyone that's interested, more information about the upcoming referendums. Um, so if you have any interest or concerns or want to come and hear what's what, um, please come. 915, it'll be in the community room. I think it's the second floor community room at the um, Richfield Bloomington Credit Union on 77th Street. And what is that about? Portland. Portland, about there, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Fitzsimmons? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I attended that open house on the county road construction, and I, uh, some of the people might still be here. I was really impressed. Uh, they had a big map, and it was interesting watching people take postums mm -hmm. and put them in the locations with comments and that. There was a lot of interaction, a lot of people there. I want to thank the city and the county and the people that were there because uh, the comments were great, and the people thought for once they had a voice, and that's what I kept hearing through the whole thing. Uh, other thing I want to mention, if you look around the city, there's construction everywhere. I know Tim Carter's here, uh, Honda's got uh, their building moved around and knocked down. And I'm glad to report on the east side, O'Reilly Auto Parts is open. <laughs> they opened uh, Friday, uh, th they had a soft opening, so Friday and Saturday. So we now have uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts and it's in the old King Oscar location. Still got to find that breakfast spot for us on the east side. But, Working on it. But uh, yeah, they're open now and I'm glad to see that hole is finally filled. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have, ma'am. <laughs> and did we cover everything for you, Council Member? Do you yeah. have anything to say, Matt, Madam Mayor? No, no, you're, okay. you're the social calendar, it appears. So. Well, thank <laughs> you. Well, um, the Richfield Foundation has opened, uh, uh, they've got a grant applications that are open and they will be open till the end of the month. So if there are any community organizations, nonprofits that wish to apply, they have till the end of the month to do so. And you can go on the city's website and get more information. Yes, and, and just Google richfieldfoundation.org and you'll also find the application. So thank you. Lots of things going on in the community that are great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll ask for the council's approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mm. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Um, the consent calendar, city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the city council. Mm. Uh, for those in the audience, the consent calendar contains several separate items which are acted upon by the city council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items and the recommended actions will also have been approved and no further council action on those items will be necessary. Tonight we start off with item A, consideration of the approval of the transfer of assets to reimburse the city airport noise acquisition fund 
and the HRA Development Fund for the purchase of two properties as part of the Richfield Parkway Phase II project. Item B is consideration of the approval of the renewal of the contract with Chiefs Towing Incorporated at 8610 Harriet Avenue, Bloomington, Minnesota for the public safety towing services from December 1, 2013 through November 30, 2014. Item C is consideration of the approval of the continuation of the agreement with the City of Bloomington for food inspection services for the City of Richfield for the year 2014. Item D is consideration of the approval of a request for a temporary on-sale liquor license, intoxicating I should say liquor license, for St. Nicholas Episcopal Church at 7227 Penn Avenue for the 2013 harvest event, uh, which occurs on November 9, 2013. Item E is consideration of the approval of a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a $2,656.63 grant from the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs for the purchase of bulletproof vests for the Richfield Department of Public Safety. And finally, item F, consideration of the approval of a resolution authorizing city staff to incur costs for proposed improvements at the city's ice arena. And that concludes tonight's consent calendar. I'll move the consent calendar. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Consent calendar. Council Member Fitzhenry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, item under consideration is a public hearing and consideration of a resolution vacating three easements adjacent to the vacant Harriet Avenue Street right of way between 77th Street West and 78th Street West. As part of the redevelopment for the new Honda Mitsubishi campus, Harriet Avenue was vacated earlier this year. The street will become a private boulevard which will be maintained by the property owner rather than the city. These small easements acquired for additional right of way behind the curb adjacent to the vacant Harriet Avenue can also be vacated as there is no longer a public need for the easements. These two easements are at the southwest corner of 77th Street in Harriet and one is at the southwest corner of 78th Street in Harriet. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, ask that we open the public uh, meeting in case some people have comments. So. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to come forward just to speak on this? Say anything positive? Anyone? Move to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? The public hearing is closed. Okay, uh, so then the, let's see, where's the resolution here? <laughs> we conducted the hearing. It's a, it's a page. Yeah, okay, okay. So the motion I'm going to put before is that we approve the attached resolution vacating three easements adjacent to the vacant Harriet, Harriet Avenue Street right away between 77th Street West and 78th Street West. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Mr. Carter. Um, Council Member Elliott. Thank you, Mayor. This item uh, involves the consideration of a resolution supporting the Nine Mile Creek Regional Trail Master Plan. Um, the Three Rivers Park District has completed the attached draft master plan for the Nine Mile Creek Regional Trail. The 15-mile trail connects Hopkins to Bloomington using the portion of trail that has already been constructed through Richfield along 75th Street and 76th Street. However, an approved master plan will allow TRPD to apply for funding to complete the remaining sections of trail that have yet to be constructed through other communities. The attached resolution of support will allow the Park District to formally approve the plan and proceed with funding applications. The draft master plan was presented for comments to the Transportation Commission on October 2, 2013 and to the Community Service Commission on October 15, 2013. The plan was also available on the Three Rivers Park District website for public review and comment from September 18, 2013 to October 17, 2013. Um, couple issues, uh, financial issues, it should be mentioned that there is no financial impact in the resolution of support and the resolution will assist Three Rivers Park District in capturing additional funds to complete the trail. Uh, Jeff, do you have something you wanna? Sure, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, a uh, uh, little bit of a theme with my stuff tonight, kind of bikes and recreation, but uh, you know, the regional system, the regional trail system isn't just about bikes, and, and I'm sure uh, Council Member Sandell can attest to the 
segment through Richfield that, that I go past every day on the way to my house. I've seen uh, joggers, I've seen kids mm -hmm. walking to school, moms and dads pushing strollers, and so um, it's really a, quite an amenity for the community. Um, tonight, uh, Kelly Grisman with the Three Rivers Park um, District is here to, to kind of go over the, the master plan, and, and obviously the segment through Richfield uh, is uh, pretty much completed, but she'll mm -hmm. highlight some of the things yet to be done and how it fits with the greater uh, trail system. So, Kelly? Thank you, Mayor, fellow council members. I have a brief presentation. If you guys have questions, please interrupt me. I want to make sure you have the information that you're looking for tonight um, before you adopt the resolution of support. So yeah, as Jeff mentioned, the Nine Mile Creek Regional Trail through the city of Richfield is fully complete. We do have a couple uh, amenities we'd like to come back and add. And I'd like to just take a minute to talk um, a little bit more about the whole regional trail corridor so that you and your community members know where they can get to on the trail and when we might be implementing adjacent trail sections. So we'll talk a little bit about the purpose of the regional trail, the overview of the trail route itself, the cost, and the next steps. Uh, I'd like to start off talking about why do we do regional trails? What does this mean when you say trails to one person? It might mean something very different to another person. I start off the presentation um, with these four images, and the one in the upper left just talks about the trails really, it's intended to connect people to places, whether that's parks, libraries, city hall, uh, places of business, places where people work, uh, schools, transit nodes. It's, again, about connecting people in places. We also focus our regional trails to balance the recreational needs of the community as well as the transportation needs of the community. So you're gonna see, like Jeff mentioned again, um, it's families walking on the trail, it is people with dogs, it is uh, people biking to work or biking to school, it's a combination, it's a multi-use regional trail. Um, it's intended to serve everyone throughout the community. Uh, it's also about how do you access the regional trail system and the regional park system. When the park district developed or started to acquire land in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, we bought a lot of land where we could buy large blocks of land and where it was affordable and where there was areas of high quality natural resources or potential for high quality natural resources. That unfortunately left Richfield out of the loop. We are now coming back 50 years later, 60 years later, trying to provide better regional park and trail access to your community members. And since there's not a large block of land that we could acquire and convert to a regional park, we are looking at um, improving service to your community members with two regional trails, one being the Nine Mile Creek Regional Trail and then one being the Inner City Regional Trail. Um, and again, that we're, our focus is that the trails are safe, multi-use, uh, that's biking, walking, inline skating, hiking, running, and similar uses. And it's really important to note that it's for pe persons of all skill levels. So you could be an expert biker or you could be on training wheels. You could be uh, someone that needs a walker or someone that is running and you are welcome to use the trail as long as you are respectful to the other users. So the trail route is 15 miles. It goes through um, five different communities, Hopkins, Minnetonka, Edina, Richfield, and Bloomington. Uh, it removes several significant barriers, which are important if you are a pedestrian or a bicycle, and that includes Trunk Highway 169, Trunk Highway 62, Trunk Highway 100, 35W, 494, and 77. Um, again, really, really important in terms of if you're trying to get around on foot or on bike. In Hopkins, we connect to four existing regional trails, local parks, southwest LRT, downtown area. Minnetonka, there's the Opus Complex, which is commercial um, business area. Edina, local parks, uh, France Avenue, Corridor, Southdale Mall, Southdale uh, Hospital, and the all the retail office business along that corridor. Three schools in Richfield, as you know, three local parks, Donaldson, Roosevelt, Washington, uh, the Best Buy World Headquarters, uh, and the Inner City Regional Trail. There are, of course, other little connections along the way, but these are probably the, the highlighted ones. Uh, and then in Bloomington, connecting to the Wildlife Refuge, Mall of America, the existing LRT line, Future South Loop District, uh, the State Trail, as well as, again, the Inner City Regional Trail. This is the region, Regional Trail segment to date. So everything generally west of 35W is on 75th Street, and then east of 35W is 76th Street. Um, I want to just, I'm going to skip ahead in two slides. 
the mayor met with Three Rivers Park District, uh, our superintendent, our uh, mm -hmm. board chair, and a fellow com another commissioner. And we talked a little bit about how do we tie in the existing trail section with um, Bloomington. There are two options on the table. The solid line is along American Boulevard, and that's the identified route right now. We are including an alternative route, which would uh, utilize the city's proposed underpass of 77th at of Trunk Highway 77 at 77th Street. Um, and uh, assuming that um, mm -hmm. everyone is supportive of this, we are still open to exploring this conversation further. So I just I wanted to uh, call your attention to that, that we, Thank you. we have not forgotten about it. Um, we do have it in there. Then if, if this seems mm -hmm. to make sense, um, we uh, are certainly willing to explore that conversation further. go back here. The other thing I wanted to um, make mention of, you are well aware that along the Nine Mile Creek Regional Trail, we do not have our directional signage yet up. Staff are recommending about $70,000 in mm. next year's CIP budget to um, go back and add this signage. We will be working with staff, assuming we are able to secure the funding to identify the exact locations. It will be a series of kiosks and then directional signage, a wayfinding signage letting people know how far it is to the terminal or the terminus of the trail as well as any local amenities that um, the city would like to include on those kiosks. Um, there'll be maps, so some trail information, and uh, again, the, the wayfinding, so the blades telling you exactly where to go and how to get there. The whole regional trail, the sections that are currently not built, is about another $25 million of investment. 23.5 of that is for the actual capital cost, and about 1.6 is for land acquisition. This is a significant undertaking. Again, it's 15 miles, but that's in five fully developed communities. This isn't like we're in Medina and there's available land that is affordable. This is <coughs> fully developed land, and if there isn't available right away or available park land, we are having to acquire. Um, land in retail areas, commercial areas, high density residential areas, and it is expensive. And then trying to develop a trail in right away that's fully developed that requires road reconstruction, utility relocates, sign replacement, um, things get expensive quickly. Um, but $25 million for 15 miles of trail I think is um, money well spent. In terms of annual operation costs, the Park District anticipates that uh, it would be about $65,000 a year. And that includes routine maintenance as well as pavement management. And pavement management is really important. If we don't invest in that, then it's going to cost us that much more when it comes to reconstructing the trail in the future. So in terms of the master plan, you guys already have the trail and built. We're signed, sealed, and delivered in that respect. <coughs> we are here tonight so that you were very much aware of um, how we included the optional alignment through the MAC property utilizing the Trunk Highway 77 tunnel. Um, make sure that we're all on the same page as that. Uh, we've been to the Transportation Commission, the Community Service Commission. We're here before you tonight, and assuming that you pass the resolution of support, we will be <coughs> submitting the master plan to the Met Council <coughs> later this week. The, mass, or the Met Council approval is incredibly important to the Park District because it allows us to seek operations and maintenance reimbursement for the existing trail segments. It also allows us to seek um, reimbursement for the planning, design, and actual construction of the remaining unbuilt trail sections. So with that, I um, will open it up to any conversation or questions you guys may have. I would just like to thank you, Kelly, and to, to offer an indication of our support for what the, what the Three Rivers Park has been doing and continues to do. I will move to uh, adopt a resolution in support of the Nine Mile Creek Regional Trail Master Plan. Second. Second. I'm wondering if you could put up your Nine Mile Creek Regional Trail segment status, the one that shows the whole community and which ones are built and which ones are not. It's on yep, page I 74 of your material. That, um, and you know what? I just updated this map uh, right before I left. I wish I would have printed it because this map is not the best. Um, it shows Two different colors. Orange are segments that are not built, allegedly. But that's not necessarily true. The Bloomington segment along American Boulevard 
is there. It's just not built to regional trail segment or standards. But you can certainly walk that route. You can certainly bike that route. The same is for a short segment in Hopkins. Um, so we are updating this map, and I can email it to Jeff, and he can get it to you. But the trail's 15 miles long. About half of it is already built, and about half of that is actually built to regional trail standards. So we do have some improvements to make to some of the existing segments, but it's functional in its current state. The reason I asked that you show that is just that it's nice to know that we were practically the first. Thank you. Yeah, and you guys absolutely were the first. And if you run into people who want to know how it functions and what it looks like, send them here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We'd be happy to share our story. And, and Kelly, just for, for note, when I got in here, Suzanne Dahl and I were, were talking, she says, oh, I see they have the alternative route already. <laughs> so this is like, we're all very, very happy about Fun. that. Thank you very yep. much for looking at that. Mm -hmm. There's a motion that's been seconded. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Council Member Garcia, you have okay. uh, the next item. Okay, this is consideration of a resolution designating city contribution towards health, term life, and dental insurance premium premiums for general services and management employees for 2014. The city, and this is done every year, the city contributes to the cost of premiums for four kinds of insurance coverages available to city employees. Full-time management and general services employee contributions are discussed within the staff report that, that uh, is attached to, to this um, report. Um, and let's see, within this, as contributions towards health insurance for part-time regular general service employees, other employees are covered under terms of their labor agreements. The, the two 2014 health insurance premium increase is 13.3%, which includes the 9.3% guaranteed rate cap, as well as fees associated with the Affordable Health Care Act. The 2014 dental rates have increased by $7.50 for employee-only coverage. The life insurance rates for 2014 are unchanged as part of a three-year guarantee from Hartford Life Insurance. And uh, if we have any questions, our assistant manager, Pam Dimitrenko, is here to help us out. Unless you have some comments beforehand, Pam. I, I no, I don't. Um, I guess it, although I, I I guess on the under the um, health insurance premium increase that, uh, as we indicated, that thirteen point three percent is part of um we are, we're in a five year contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield and we had rate caps, but of course the Affordable Health Care Act there's some fees now associated with that and those are then reflected in the um, thirteen thirteen point three percent instead of the nine and a half percent for this year. And how many years do we have left on the contract? So then this is just the, uh, so we've got uh, three more years. Three. Because they're saying with the Affordable Care Act that insurance may go down. Um, perhaps. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If there's no other comments or questions, uh, I move that we adopt the resolution designating the city's contribution towards health, term life, and dental insurance premiums for general services and management employees for 2014. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, city manager's report. Uh, I really don't have a whole lot to report. I would say, though, that just reminding everyone that the HR commissioner interviews take place on Saturday, mm -hmm. October 26th at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And I just want to also note that we have a couple of students here from Kennedy who are, Jefferson, excuse me, Jefferson's uh, coming in because this is one of their school projects, right? And they had to come to a city council meeting. Hi. Mm -hmm. And they had to sit through the meeting before I would sign off. They got a picture <laughs> so that they could prove they, they were here. The old school teacher is still in me, so thank you for being here. It's nice to have students here come and doing that. Madam Mayor, I wanted to ask our city manager if he could give us an update on the 77th Street uh, Tunnel. 
Oh, sure. Uh, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Councilmember Garcia, Council Members. The, um, the work on the 77th Street Tunnel, uh, or what, we've, what we're trying to do at this point, certainly is to get it included. We made an application for the bonding bill for this year. Um, and uh, we have, at the advice of uh, Representative Linda Slocum, uh, brought in uh, Ellis Hausman and Representative Hornstein uh, to take a here to City Hall. We took them on a tour of that area so they could see the where, where the street, 77th Street stops, and then we took them around and showed how the how the road, it says, um, Dead end. Uh, yeah, on the other side, on the airport side, that there's a street there and it just stubs off into nothing. That was an interesting uh, discussion, and I, I do believe that, um, I do believe that they had a sense for how important that connection is. And I, I do probably uh, have more of a sense of uh, encouragement and optimism than I have had in a long time that we'll get something out of the bonding bill. Um, you know, I'll be honest, I don't think we're gonna get the full cost of the project out of the bonding bill, but I'll be darn surprised if we don't get something out of the bonding bill to help us start that project. What we're also doing is, um, uh, as Kelly said, we've met with Three Rivers Park District. We're meeting with different entities to find who might want to partner with us. Uh, it would be nice if, now of course if, if, the if the tunnel came through, Three Rivers Park District would look at that alternative route and then be a partner and help us get that done. They would uh, put something, put some money in the game probably. Um, we're trying to get up meeting with MTC because MTC would probably put at least 100 bus routes on that immediately. And um, I think there's great value for MTC to have that tunnel there. We're also looking at setting up a meeting. It's, it's difficult to get everybody together, but with the MAC, uh, you know, the MAC contributed money towards the 34th Street um, improvement that's happening right now. And that's one entrance to the airport. But you know, really, uh, on this west side, the 77th Street Tunnel would be another entrance to the airport that would be very valuable, I think, to all the air cargo carriers. Uh, and, you know, uh, would provide, again, some other access where you could get uh, to either terminal without ever um, stepping on 494. And so uh, hopefully the MAC would find that to be of interest. Um, so we're going to look to get some partnership help from them as well. Um, so again, I'm optimistic something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and any first step we get, I mean, it, it, it puts it on the map and gets it closer to being shovel ready and you never know. Uh, the more attention that we give to it, I, I think the people who, who really take a look at that tunnel and take a look at what the potential is for that part of Richfield, the corner of Richfield, and for the connectivity um, uh, between the, the airport and all the way over to Edina, it, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I would wish too that we would uh, have a partnership with our Congressman, Congressman uh, Ellison, because yes. uh, quite <laughs> frankly, I, I, I mean, I, you miss Congressman Sable well, com because <laughs> he, he had his fingerprints and footprints all over Richfield. Yeah. He, was, he was really, um, you know, such a big help. About $65 million worth of, as I recall. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, um, we, and I, I have met a couple of times with some mem staff <laughs> members of uh, Congressman Ellison uh, mm -hmm. and told him how important the tunnel is to us. And, um, probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to give another phone call and just uh, remind them how important the tunnel is to us. Well, and I know that the mayor is constantly, you know, um, bringing the issue forward in, in her advocacy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that, but uh, I don't know what it's gonna take, but let's keep pursuing that yes. avenue. Ma maybe another bus tour. And that really did make an impression. It yeah. really helped, and I don't know yeah. who else we need to do on that, but it might be nice to do to take Mac because I think that would be, I think MTC's sold. Um, mm -hmm. I just think m there's other people we should be talking to, but that that was a really very valuable. Mm -hmm. and I think I it was. Thank, we should thank Linda Slocum, um, Representative Slocum. Right, because she put she, she really putting put that, that together. together. Yes, she yeah. really helped us make that yeah. happen. I, and and you're right. We we haven't touched base again with Keith Ellison. The last time right. we were there, again we weren't getting any earmarks, and they haven't put a transportation bill up in I don't know how long. They just keep reauthorization and keep <laughs> money flowing. So there hasn't right. been any money to come back mm -hmm. for that. But and we did meet with uh, Commissioner Charlie Zelly. Yes. And um, so and we'll continue these meetings and up until there. And I think we'll be testifying probably uh, at the session when it starts in February. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll see where we're at. Mm -hmm. 
So thanks. All of the council can be advocates for this, yeah. I think, in one way or another. Keep and then I wanted to ask another question. Please, please. Uh, what, where are we on the band shell issue? Do we, okay, I, I know that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know why it wound up at the Community Services Commission other than that the park was gonna be, you know, one of the venues. Mm -hmm. Possibly. But uh, I, I, I would have thought that it would be nice to have an ad hoc committee that is, you know, really interested in, in pursuing this because I think it would be um, such a, um, you know, it's needed. We know that for a fact because right now it's um, um, the um, community, um, Community services has, um, a, uh, you know, what do you call it? Some uh, concerts, and so does the um, the historical center, and so there's other places. And I know that there's a lot of groups that would really benefit and would just love to to be part of this. So maybe we can, uh, you mm -hmm. know, put our he our heads together and see if we can maybe put together an ad hoc group that will help us in pursuing this. I, I, I think yeah. right now, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Council Member Garcia, members of the council, there it's, the project has been touched with reality. And, and that is to say that when we started and embarked on this, I, I, I went with um, Dave, David Butler and uh, Jim Topitzhofer and we met with uh, folks over at Best Buy uh, before all the adverse things happened and Best Buy was looking at this and uh, we were thinking that we were going to get some you know, some s significant potential money to help us do the project. And that's not going to happen. And, y you know, the, the real source of money right now, the only source of money for that project that, uh, that we are aware of is the $250,000 that was sort of earmarked out of our um, special revenue fund or liquor profits to do the project. Now, what I believe that some of the uh, folks who had looked at what they were anticipating or what they wanted in terms of a, uh, a band shell was more in the tune of, heck, at least half a million closer to a million dollars, so, so we're not there. So the money issue is, remains out to, to, to be determined. Right now, where it kind of sits is that I th th there's the whole issue of what is the proper venue? Is the proper venue somewhere over at, uh, at Veterans Park or is the venue uh, over off of Lindale Avenue or, or some other place? So I think at this particular time, what's happening is um, they're kind of taking a wait and see attitude. There are gonna be some smaller concerts that are gonna be done uh, at the, um, uh, behind or next to Lake, where Lake Winds Co-op is going on in, in that project and kind of see how that kind of thing uh, goes over. Um, and I think it's more right now of a wait and see kind of thing. Uh, I don't see anything happening in the immediate future with the band shell. But, but now they did do a survey and we were supposed to at least get a report back of what those surveys and everything mean. The community survey? Yeah, we can get that. I mean. It wasn't a scientific survey. It no, was it wasn't not, a scientific was survey. I, I and I don't think. But along with the parking and the other stuff yeah. that we pulled together, yeah. we should have some uh, indication. It would be nice to have see that. But information. essentially it got stopped in community services and we've never been gotten a report right. back. Community yeah. service. And, yeah. and right. I guess I'm with Edwina. I would like to see, this is something that's been in our master park plan for years and years and years. In fact, we had a set place for it at Veterans Park at one point. Right. Um, I would like to see us get an advocate group going mm -hmm. that would look for it, would, would look and help us decide where it should be and how we should spend the money. And we do have a, s a beginning budget to begin with. I, I could support that as well. Yeah. I, think so I, I think there's there's interest again, and I know that David Butler's kind of reignited it himself again, wanting to put himself into that, and then he's found a couple of possible pots. And of I know that we can <coughs> talk about. So go ahead, ask me. If there's going to be something at the Lindale Garden Center site, I know that they did get some funding from the Met Council, didn't they? I don't think did that's been so for some improvement. Yet. Oh, but possible that's not for that. Well, I think it could be used for some of that, and I'm not sure if they were granted all of it just yet. I, don't I know I, I signed I something about it. It's too that. bad Jim Topitzhofer is not here at the moment mm -hmm. because there is, um, I thought that there's, that something had to happen yet before that uh, came, to, came to fruition. Because I, I just want to make clear that I think public money should be spent in public parks, not in a, 
not enough in uh, development. development. And, 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 so on. and to that point, you know, ultimately, uh, you, the city council, are the ultimate mm -hmm. decision makers in terms of what happens to money that is mm -hmm. uh, put in a, any capital improvement uh, uh, budget right. mm -hmm. or capital improvement program, mm -hmm. and you'd have to vote on where you're going to put that money. Okay. You know, I, I, I think that uh, probably the best thing to do right now is, uh, is to bring this whole issue back to Jim Toppert's offer to talk to the Community Services Commission and to let them know of what the council's uh, desires are in this, in this matter. And um, since they were looking at it, um, I, I just think it would be good for at least them to know uh, what the mm -hmm. council wants and, and, and the fact that you're looking at putting uh, some other ad hoc committee to look at it. Council Member Fitzsimmon, were you in? Oh, continue? yeah, I think, well, also I think that we need to look at the parking over at the ice arena. Oh, yeah. That's another thing that came yep. up because we've been going to the games there. And, yep. and mm -hmm. uh, the magicians are filling that parking lot. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. And, the, yeah. and, and <laughs> again, to that end. Um, They're a winning team, too. Yes. We have a winning team here in Minnesota, guys. Yeah. We actually do. <laughs> we know that, that there's got to be some parking modifications over there. There's, there is, um, mm -hmm. there's, there's land to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a matter of money and uh, putting that together. But we, uh, we always thought that if the Minnesota Magicians take off and it uh, gets to be a real popular venue, parking is going to be mm -hmm. uh, at a premium. Yes. And, and from what I'm hearing, yeah, they're, getting, they're drawing better and better crowds. Oh, yeah. So, it's But to go, to go back to the Community Services Commission, the thing is, I think if we put an ad hoc group that actually believed in the band shell sure. and wanted to promote it, that's a lot different than taking it to the commission who, you know, who really, I'm, you know, I'm not sure how many of them actually did support it. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying bring it back to the commission yeah. to deal with. I'm Just simply saying yeah. bring it back as a courtesy to the commission sure, to okay. say that this is what the council would rather do with it. Right. And, and I, I just think that would be a respectful way to, to deal Certainly. with the commission on it and, sure. and, and at the same time get what you want. Mm -hmm. council, council Member Elliott hasn't weighed in. You know, speaking of Mr. Butler, I know that Mr. Butler's concern was in terms of putting full effort into fundraising is the possibility or maybe even the probability that's going to end up in Lindell Gardens because he won't, he won't raise a finger to put money into a band show over there. Mm -hmm. Um, th and that's where the, the disparity comes up is we've got a fair, we're, we're somewhat polarized in, in location. We've got people that seriously advocate infringing on, on Veterans Park and the, the birds and everything else that's over there. We've got people that think a natural venue is the gardens. Um, the gardens has an inherent parking problem. We may have one over there. So, y you know, a, a couple things come to mind. If you're going to do an ad hoc committee, bigger numbers don't necessarily make it better. No, exactly. But what we need is what we need is a strong chair and someone that goes out and takes all the the concerns everybody has and tries to come up with a solution or a resolution that they can propose to us or put mm -hmm. to us. And so what you need is somebody that number one isn't dead set on a location, mm -hmm. is dead right. set on having it, and so that you can go in with open eyes and weigh the pros and cons of of all the venues and come with a realistic proposal to us on what they think is best for the mm -hmm. city. And and that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna cause them some some distress with some of the people that advocate for mm -hmm. one one side or another. So it's gonna have to be some fairly strong, well established members of the community that want to put mm -hmm. the time and effort into really coming up with a hard look at it and come up with a proposal for it. Okay. So I'd I'd endorse it, but I think we need some pretty strong people that that that, that will volunteer and, and we can put mm -hmm. on it. Okay. All right. But I think it's doable. I do too. I think it's doable mm -hmm. as well, and I'd be willing to put some effort in it myself, because I think we need a. I, I've always been supportive of a band show. Music in the park and things like this is wonderful. It's wonderful for our community. It builds community. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other <laughs> items? I, I have just a, a of interest to this group. Um, I just came back from Asheville, North Carolina, where I was off visiting with my son and my husband. And Asheville is up in the Blue Ridge Mountain area, up in the hills. It's a lovely area. And it's, it's quite a, the word I kind of used was funky town, but it's, it's a college town or university town. Very artsy, um, sculptures all over the place, artists' Wonderful. displays. And they have a sculpture tour in their city. And I thought, well, <laughs> hey, they don't hold anything to us. But so that is, and they promote it. It's one of the ways that they say we're an art, art 
community and these are the things you do and you can they give you a map and you can follow through the city streets to see the arch it's so wonderful I love that so I uh, we've already done it and I think that's great and we're going to continue yeah and Edina is envious of us so <laughs> I hope Jim Hoagland's watching <laughs> claims and payroll second any discussion all those in favor signify by aye aye, aye. opposed aye. motion carries I'm um, seeing no further action. I call this meeting adjourned. You can come forward and I'll sign your paper. <laughs> Thank you for saying. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. It's good to see you folks.